Vibe coding, not just for individuals and startups anymore. This thing is coming to the enterprise. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with Salesforce bringing Vibe coding to the enterprise with a new AI developer tool. Agent Force Vibes is a new AI powered IDE designed to build, test, and deploy Salesforce apps and agents. The platform is compatible with VS Code IDEs like Cursor and Windsurf and leverages Klein for agentic chat functions. In addition, the platform includes an AI coding agent called Vibe Cody. Gotta anthropomorphize these things. It's basically a rule of nature right now. The agent is designed to work as a pair programmer, generating and refining code based on text prompts. As with other Salesforce AI products, the platform is built on OpenAI's models, in this case, GPT-5. Now, of course, the big selling point for this is having a Vibe coding platform that's already plugged into your organization's Salesforce environment, allowing it to reuse existing code and follow coding guidelines. Dan Fernandez, the VP of Product for Developer Services, said, We're trying to give you everything, so rather than having to spend a bunch of time on setting up MCP, setting up a dev environment, setting up tools, everything's pre-built and ready for you, including AI requests to get started. And that reality is sort of a differentiator on how we're lowering the barrier to entry. A couple different takes I've seen on this. The first is, yes, a bunch of people are noticing the names. VC Tanay Japora writes, Absolutely incredible that Salesforce is really calling this Agent Force Vibes and the agent within it Vibe Cody. I also saw more than one person comparing it to Microsoft's classic old Clippy. There were also some negative takes that basically argued that this is Salesforce throwing anything with agents at a wall to see what sticks. But my instinct is that it's not that at all. I think instead what this is validation of is the fact that in eight short months since this term was coined, vibe coding and the broader agentic coding that it sits within has gone from something that was nascent just for individuals and often finding resistance in the enterprise to something that is completely transforming businesses from within. Agentic coding has become the most dominant use case for AI inside companies, but what it takes to do agentic coding inside companies is different than what it takes to build a great consumer tool. The market is absolutely starting to fill in that gap. Factory, for example, is a much beloved company that is explicitly going after that. And I think that this is just an absolutely enormous growth area and one that it makes complete sense for Salesforce to try to get in on. Now, staying on the agentic coding theme for a minute, Google's Jules coding agent is now available in IDEs via a public API as well as command line interface. Previously, Google's asynchronous coding agent was only available through a web interface and GitHub. Now developers can summon Jules within their normal IDE, which of course eliminates costly context switching. Now, Jules is doing a lot of work to be a player in the AI coding game. They have been pumping out features and continue to tease new ones, just like I was just saying that it made sense to me that Salesforce, as an existing big B2B enterprise-style player, is going to play in this vibe coding space. So too, it makes sense that Google is putting a ton of emphasis in this particular product. Staying on our enterprise theme for a moment, Claude has entered the chat literally with Anthropic's chatbot now available as a native plugin for Slack. Users can now call on and tag Claude as they would with any coworker. Within Slack, Claude can search through channels, DMs, and files for additional context. Anthropic suggests prepping for meetings, gathering project updates, or creating documentation, all of that juicy full Slack context. Now, some noted that this is actually the second time Anthropic has announced Slack integration with the previous launch all the way back in early 2023. That iteration of Claude for Slack was made impossible in June when Salesforce changed Slack's API policy to prevent third-party AI products from accessing chat data. That change severely impacted AI products built on top of the corporate data contained in Slack, particularly enterprise AI search engine Glean. It also highlighted that Salesforce recognized that the rich context available within Slack was a valuable resource in the AI era. From content is king to context is king. Alongside this week's announcement from Anthropic, Salesforce announced the general policy change to allow third-party AI apps back into their ecosystem. On Tuesday, Salesforce announced a new API for real-time search for Slack, an MCP server, and enhanced developer tools for AI developers. There was a long list of partners who are already building AI apps and agents designed to plug into Slack. However, Glean was not on that list, with Salesforce seemingly wanting to control the context and search layer themselves. They wrote, Conversational data is the gold of the agentic era, yet it's been locked away in unstructured messages and chats, largely out of reach for employees, let alone applications. TLDR is that Salesforce appears to be happy to make Slack a multi-agent interoperable work platform, while also recognizing the need to control that digital gold of the context layer. One more on Anthropic, the company has hired a new CTO with a focus on infrastructure. Former Stripe CTO Rahul Patil will join the company taking over from co-founder Sam McCandlish. McCandlish will move over to a new role as chief architect. 
As part of the change, Anthropic will also restructure their teams, bringing the product engineering team closer to the infrastructure and inference teams. Patil will oversee compute, infrastructure, inference, and assorted engineering tasks, while McCandlish will be responsible for model training. This shifting focus to infrastructure makes a ton of sense given industry trends and recent Anthropic-specific challenges. On the one hand, you had those high-profile infrastructure failures over the summer that really undermined Anthropic's reputation for a while there, but more broadly, you just have the incredible competitive pressures that they're operating within. OpenAI is over here announcing multi-hundred billion dollar infrastructure deals, but we've heard very little about Anthropic's infrastructure plans. Are they still largely reliant on their strategic partnership with Amazon to secure the compute they need? Those are the sort of questions that are going to get louder and louder. One update from the browser wars, Perplexity has made their Comet AI browser available for free. Until now, Comet was exclusively available to Perplexity Max customers, i.e. those who are willing to pay 200 bucks a month to cover the high cost of serving an agentic internet experience. Free users will have a very similar experience to the original release. They'll be able to access the in-browser assistant, shopping, travel, and finance tools. However, the free browser will use less powerful AI models, which could limit some of its agentic features. Mac subscribers will still have access to higher performing models alongside Perplexity's newly released email assistant. Now, for many, it is tempting to count Perplexity out a priori because of just the incredible distribution of their competitors, but having a free version does really make a big difference. Lastly today, OpenAI has closed their monster secondary round, officially becoming the most valuable private company in history. The deal closed at a valuation of $500 billion, pushing them past SpaceX at $400 billion for the first time. Current and former employees sold around $6.6 billion worth of OpenAI stock to investors including Thrive Capital, SoftBank, Dragoneer, Abu Dhabi's MGX, and T. Rowe Price. Now, OpenAI had allowed for up to $10 billion to be sold, so it seems that a lot of employees are holding onto their stock rather than grabbing the liquidity. Many residents of San Francisco lamented the fact that that $6.6 billion is more than the entire amount that was spent on houses in San Francisco last year, meaning basically that if you were not at OpenAI, you don't get to buy a house in San Francisco for the foreseeable future. In one hilarious twist, Elon Musk's net worth also just recently tipped over $500 billion, with Lasano Guy joking, OpenAI is now worth one Elon Musk. We don't have nearly enough time to get into that can of worms. Indeed, for now, that is going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode.